Stay right Just behind down. the doors. Right behind the doors. Police yeah, we have to. Man, going in with the AC, OC spray. I've never wanted to ignore working on a video to keep playing the game so much. And I can't believe that it's taken 18 years for a game like this to come into the limelight. Police, hands up! He's down. Nice. Where are you at? Motherfucker, you shot me. Are you dead? Motherfucker, you shot me. When did I shoot you? Hands up! Developed by indie studio Void Interactive, Ready or Not is a tactical FPS that puts you right in the middle of SWAT response scenarios. You pick your loadout and then you jump into an area with your team to bring order to an area overrun with crime. There's a bit of an unsettling vibe that I get from this game between the subtle audio cues and the elements of surprise around every corner you never know what you're gonna run into. It almost feels like a horror game at times. This is due to the grounded and realistic approach that Ready or Not brings to its level design because every place that you visit in the game feels genuinely realistic. This is Talk. Entry team. Suspects have taken refuge in the area and are refusing to cooperate. I would always get this uneasy feeling as I kind of discovered the chaos that unfolded in a place that looked like a place that I would really visit, and that's what really sells Ready or Not right off of the bat. Just another day in Los Suenos. Ready or Not also uses this realistic level design to tell these micro stories as you make your way through an area. What looks like a normal car dealership or a kid's birthday party usually is hiding something more sinister under the surface, which may be the cause of you being there in the first place. Everyone just left. I tried to stay and help whoever I could. And I've never really played another FPS that touched on the seedy elements of society quite like Ready or Not, outside of another game that we'll talk about. The level selection is actually pretty generous considering that this game is still in early access, and because it's based on LA it seems, you have a ton of these locations that you'd find in a normal city, like post offices, mansions, drug houses, and cold outposts in the middle of nowhere. You won't be going into these levels alone though, because you always have a team ready to bring order to the chaos behind you. I was solo in that room, bro, surrounded by like six people. There is a single player component where you can give your squad commands, but you'll definitely get the most out of this game by playing with other people online. Go behind me. <laughs> this is a team-based game though, so don't expect any PvP modes as of right now. There's a few different variations of the missions you'll take on in Ready or Not, and they usually boil down to taking down as many of the bad guys into custody as possible and saving as many civilians as you can. Sometimes you might have to secure some evidence or find an item that's inside the level that you're raiding, but that'll vary from level to level. <laughs> When it comes to how you take on these missions, you have a decent amount of tools at your disposal. You have a wide selection of ARs, pistols, and non-lethal weapons at your disposal. You also have an array of tools at your disposal to help your team execute a mission as effectively as possible, like night vision goggles, battering ram, tasers, and pepper spray, which is probably the most OP weapon in this game. You also have a probe that'll let you look under doors, but I usually just kick them down instead of wasting the time doing that. Oh, that was a waste. The weapons in Ready or Not have a real punch to them. You can just chew through walls, bullets will ricochet, and they'll actually get out of control pretty quick when you're going full auto if you're not careful. <laughs> not to mention there is friendly fire in this game, so they can get caught up in the middle of your firefight pretty quick if you're not careful and using effective teamwork. Talk to entry team. This is talk. Every gunfight feels lethal and fast, with that same firepower translating over to the enemies as well. They'll flank you and they'll take you out quickly if you're not paying attention, so you really gotta be mindful of every corner. Every scenario will play out a bit differently, giving you different spawn locations for the enemies and the civilians whenever you start up a level, so replaying the same level never feels too dull. You have to move slowly and take your time with your team. Your health is your most scarce resource and trying to play this game like Call of Duty will just end poorly. At least most of the time. Show me your hands. Unfortunately, I can't say that that hard-hitting gameplay translates to the less lethal options as well. You can use a pepper ball gun that feels more like a BB gun, and the taser just always felt kind of awkward to me. It just doesn't have that same punch to it. This is compounded by the fact that you don't get those same detailed hit effects whenever you use the non-lethal weapons, but the pepper spray is still pretty fun to use. Drop it now. 
Drop it now. Drop the weapon now. I'll drop your weapon. Family. Drop it now. Drop you the weapon have now. A chance. Ready or Not is a very unique game that brings a lot of concepts that we don't see in FPS games today, but it's not the first to do this. In 2005, there was a little game called SWAT 4. Developed by Irrational Games exclusively for the PC, this was a team-based FPS that aimed to bring realistic SWAT tactics and a gritty, believable world to the genre. I had never played this game before, so I decided to jump in and see how closely Ready or Not followed the formula. And it turns out, they followed it pretty closely. <laughs> Guess her Bonnie and Clyde days are over. You'll immediately be able to see the strong world building that influenced Ready or Not in this game. When your game starts, you'll get a quick mission briefing before entering the level, usually fixated on your target building. Lighting is meticulously placed to lead you towards your objective, and multiple entry points are scattered to provide you with options for completing the mission. Sound design is excellent too. Whether it's just subtle ambient music filling out a quiet pace, or a train car bustling past a bedroom window, it greatly helps set the mood and keep you on your toes. And outside of these early 2000s awkward controls that are really just a product of its time, you can really see where Ready or Not got its influence here. Because it plays extremely similar to its spiritual successor, all the way down to the mission of Objectives. It's still the same clear a room and save all the hostages affair with a realistic locale and an array of tools at your disposal. A neat little detail though is that you can actually change your team's weapon selection so you can decide what they use for the mission. There's even a mission maker where you can pick and choose what elements you want in a scenario. The gameplay and world building still hold up surprisingly well. There's still quite a few things that Ready or Not could still take notes on too, like the overall level of detail in this game and the level of customization when it comes down to your teammates and creating your own scenarios. Leads been injured. So now that we know where Ready or Not comes from, where can we see that Ready or Not has improved this formula from 2005 SWAT 4? Well, for starters, we can see a huge update in the graphical department thanks to Ready or Not's use of the Unreal Engine. That look good! That look good! That look, that look, that look good! That look good! Lighting and material look fantastic, but they've also gone to great lengths to provide realistic levels of detail to the environment. There's layers of these destructible objects behind panes of glass, doors will crumble and break apart depending on the material, fish tanks will leak water, and buildings feel lifelike to scale and layout. There's also gore fix that are used strategically when it comes to blood, bullet impacts, and NPCs will react realistically to being hit, which goes a long way to add to the immersion. It's not just the graphics that Ready or Not improves on, however, because Void Interactive has went to great lengths to take the Swap 4 formula and streamline it and make it as easy to pick up and play as possible. You can cuff enemies behind them now by just pressing the action button. In the single player, you can call your teammates to action by their team color or just by all of them as a whole. It doesn't take very long and it's not very clunky to switch between your weapons and equipment. It doesn't take very long to get into a match either because despite the fact that this is an early access, I can boot up the game and find a match with other players almost instantly. I was intimidated by your pepper spray. I like that there's no restrictions on the loadout you can use, at least in early access that is. You and your team can choose to take on specific roles, but you're never tied down to any specific one, which makes the gameplay feel very dynamic. You can choose to take a less lethal approach or just go in guns blazing, but that will affect your team's overall score at the end of the game. Notifying Morg. Talk reporting. Copy that oh, entry team. I, Notifying Morg. I don't know. And for all the fun that this game is, it does have its few problems, and it is, of course, an early access, so hopefully these will be ironed out by the official release. There seems to be separate voice chat channels, and I think the reasoning behind this is so each team can have their own little communication sectors, but I never found this being beneficial for online play at all. Yeah, hey, that's another thing that's stupid about this game. Why the fuck do we need local and team when it's not a like it's not competitive multiplayer game? We usually just became more confused than anything as to why we couldn't hear each other without manually switching the team chat. I definitely think a non proximity team chat should be enabled by default. This is a PvE game, so getting good AI that can dynamically react to how you play is very important. No. Put your hands up. No. Oh, shit. Wow. Like Enemies will attempt to flank you if you aren't paying attention. They wear civilian clothing to blend in with the hostages, and they will actually try to catch you by surprise by hiding weapons that you can't see. In one game, I had forced an enemy to drop his weapon, and I didn't cuff him, which ended up being a mistake because I ended up with a knife in the back. <laughs> Ran towards the. Bro, that scared the fuck. That's it. 
where we're on right now. I'm breaching with the staff. They are far from perfect, however. There'll be times when they just instantly kill you with dead on accuracy before you have a chance to react, but there's other times where they're just completely oblivious to the gunfire happening in the room right next to them. There's been times that I walked in on enemies just staring at a wall despite the fact that I opened a door where they're holding a hostage inside of the room. But the worst offender of all has to be the teammate AI. After playing for 10 plus hours exclusively online, my computer controlled companions just couldn't compare to a real squad. There are times where your teammates do a decent job of taking out enemies, but most of the time it seems like they just can't understand how to cover a path you're taking. If I was taking point, I was basically a sitting duck. Also, I'm no SWAT expert by any stretch, but I imagine that there's better ways to cover a room than how these guys are doing it sometimes. I want to see the weapon on the ground. Don't so worry, fuck. everything will be Please. fine. Talk to Element. When they aren't blocking a doorway, they're just kind of all piling up in the center of a room, just staring at single file. Overall though, with some good AI tweaks and decent progression, I think they got a winner here. The level design is pretty solid. Some maps are better than others in my opinion, but the sheer variety and replayability factor make them all solid additions nonetheless. I hope to see them continue to innovate and make more creative levels to take on because I can't get enough of them. Eat shit and Drop die. The shot. Drop the weapon now. Drop it now. Drop your weapon. Back to the inside. Drop the weapon now. Drop it now. Hands up. Drop your weapon. <laughs> What the hell are you doing? I could easily see missions taking place on a train at an airport, apartment complexes, or any other familiar location. Public perception and morality might play a role in the subject matter they want to touch on, but I think that's a limit that they can choose to draw the line on. I don't typically indulge in early access games, but Ready or Not is definitely one that I feel I can recommend. Talk to it. Ah! Watch it. It has a lot of content to play with. Decent replay value and fast online play. Of course the game has its quirks to iron out, but I hope to see a successful Prime launch in the future. I also feel a huge quality of life improvement would be controller support, along with full console access in the future. I think a lot of people don't know that they want a game like this, but I guarantee you that they will when this hits store shelves. Thank you guys for watching. As always, a big thanks to the channel members. Behind the scenes, early access or extra content will always be there. Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't realize you had to like hold yourself to stop the bleeding. I got a ton of other video game retrospectives and first person shooter reviews on the channel so go check those out and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. If you like me covering this game and you want to see some other stuff like this, recommend me some stuff in the comments. Let me know what I should do. But uh, other than that, I'm out.